Welcome to Data Demystified. I'm Jeff Gallick, and this is my series of tutorial videos on how to use SPSS to work with data. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use my favorite tool in SPSS, Explore, to help you understand your data. As always, we'll be using the YouTube Viewing Habits survey that I created, and you can find both a link to the data file and a video tutorial of the data below. One of the reasons I really like the Explore tool is that it's a quick way to take a look at your data and see lots of information about it. And there's two main ways that I use it, so I'll show you both. First, to get to the tool, we go up to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and Explore. That opens up this window here, and you can see there's a bunch of boxes that you can populate. So the first way I like to use this tool is to look at lots of information about lots of variables very, very quickly. So I can grab a whole bunch of my variables, and I'll just do that here, kind of arbitrarily. I'll just grab a bunch of these, put them in the dependent list, and then I'm going to check a few options to make sure I get extra information. Under Statistics, I would like to ask for the descriptive information, which gives me the confidence interval for the mean of 95%, which is great. I don't use MSMators all that often, but I use outliers quite a bit, and percentiles are useful as well. Under plots, I always like to make sure I select the histogram. I find that to be a very useful plot that I use when I try to understand the shape of my data. And then depending on the type of analyses I'm doing, I'll often ask for normality plots with tests. What this will basically do is take a look and see if our data are normally distributed so that we can use them for things like regression analysis. So I'll select that here so we can see what that looks like. And then I'll click continue, and then I will click OK in a second. One thing to note is that I am leaving the factor list blank and I am asking for both statistics and plots, and so we'll see all of that right here. Explore can take a second or two to run because it's actually computing quite a few things, but when it's done, you get this large amount of output. And one of the reasons I like this so much is that it very quickly lets me understand a lot about my data. So the first, it tells me about the cases and the information that are being analyzed. And so for instance, I see that there's 978 cases with valid data, there's some missing data, and there's a total of 1,000 individuals in this data set. If I keep scrolling down, this is where all the information really comes to light. So for instance, I have for all the variables that I asked for, I have the mean as well as the standard error. I have the confidence interval that surrounds that mean. I have the 5% trimmed mean, which basically means take the top five and the bottom 5% of all responses, remove them, and then recalculate. So this kind of gets rid of outliers. That's nice. I have the median. I have the variance, the standard deviation, the minimum maximum, the range. I have the interquartile range, which is basically just the distance between the first and the third quartile, or the 25th and 75th percentile, so you get a sense of that range. And I have some information about the shape of the distribution, which is captured by skewness and kurtosis, and I'll talk about that in a different video. A few things that I can do right away is just get a feel for what my data look like. I can also do some sanity check. For instance, I know that this question here was asked on a seven point scale ranging from one to seven. And as it happens, the minimum response is a one and the maximum is a seven. That's a good thing, but sometimes that doesn't work out. You know, sometimes when you're typing in data and putting it into Excel to then import into SPSS, you make a mistake. This is a really quick and easy way to catch that mistake if that range actually includes values that are not possible for your data set. So I make sure to take a look at things like that. In my normal workflow, I'll actually just dump all my data into Explore and I'll take a quick look at this. It takes me a few minutes, but it's a very powerful way to see if my data are valid and if my data makes sense to me. If I keep scrolling down, beyond all the descriptives. I do have this percentile chart, which tells me what value represents the fifth, 10th, 25th, and so on percentile in the distribution of all the data. That's a nice way to get a sense of what the distribution looks like. And of course I have that for all my variables. This table defines the extreme values, which are just the highest and lowest values within a data set, though they're not necessarily statistical outliers. For that, you're gonna have to look at things like box and whisker plots. Next, we have our tests of normality for each of our variables, which are ways for us to detect if the distribution of those data are in fact normally distributed. And actually what we see here is all of these variables are not normally distributed. And we know that because right here we have our Shapiro-Wilk test of normality. And the null hypothesis for this test is that the distribution of the data mirror a normal distribution. If we find a statistically significant result, one that is less than 0.05, we can reject that null hypothesis and conclude that the data are not normally distributed. And if we were then going to run some sort of regression analysis on this where normality was required, we'd really have to be careful. Moving down even further, we now have histograms of all of our data. And in fact, we can even see the skew here, right? We see that there's a long tail over here on these data with a big peak towards the beginning. That's very much not normally distributed. We also, for each variable, get these stem and leaf plots, which quite frankly, I hate and never use. So I'm just gonna ignore them. I find them completely useless compared to some of the other visualizations like histograms. We do get our QQ plots, which I talk about in detail in a different video, but roughly this is another way for us to visually inspect whether our data are distributed in a way that we'd expect them to be. And very clearly, by the way, we see here they're not. We also have another version of a QQ plot, which again, I'll describe in another place. 
we have what's called a box and whisker plot. These are also wonderful for showing us statistical outliers. Each one of those stars actually represents a statistical outlier, which SPSS catalogs as three standard deviations or more from the mean. If you don't know how a box and whisker plot works, basically the whiskers, these lines over here on the bottom and on the top, those are your most extreme non-statistical outlier values at the top and the bottom. The middle is the median, that black line in the middle is the median, and then the box represents the third and the first quartile values. So you get a sense of what the size of this distribution actually is. And then this repeats for all of our variables, so we get the same information. And this is a really quick way, as I scroll through this, to look and see what our distributions look like, what extreme values we might have, and so on. So that's really the first way that I use Explore. The other way I use it is to actually understand how my variables differ as a function of some other variables. So let me show you what that looks like. Under Analyze, Descriptives, Explore, I'm going to keep this simple, so I'm actually going to just get rid of all these variables. I'll select them all and get them away. And I'll pick something like this question, opinion terrible, to put back into my dependent list. And then I'm going to split this, that's the factor list, by this variable called minute watched, which is a categorical variable that reports how much individuals spent time watching YouTube on a given day. So I'm going to include that here, and we'll see what that looks like. So I'll hit OK. I'll keep all my other options the same. And our output now is going to list a few things. So the first is it's going to show us how many cases exist for each of my categories. So these are the different ways in which someone could have responded to this minute watch question. How many individuals exist in each of those? How many missing cases there are? And the total number including those missing cases. What's noteworthy is when I go down to descriptives now, I don't just get an overall general report out for the one variable that I asked about, this overall dimension about YouTube, but I get it broken up by my different levels of minute watch. So this right here now summarizes all the values we had before, but only for the cases where someone selected zero minutes watched. This is for one to 30 minutes watched and so on. If I scroll down, what you'll see is that you get the percentile breakdowns again by group. You get your reporting of extreme values by group. You get your tests of normality by group as well. You get your histograms broken down by each of the groups here. So you can see what the shapes are, which is actually very useful information. You get these stem and leaf plots, which again, I can't stand and I never look at. You get your tests of normality, which are great to have at each variable level. And I think the most useful is this box and whisker plot broken down by category. So this is now saying for this question about the opinion people have towards YouTube, how does the distribution differ in responses as a function of what they said in terms of how many minutes they watched. This gives you a very quick assessment and feel for your data. So for instance, it looks like these three categories have a fairly similar response. This one is probably our lowest, and these guys are somewhere in the middle. Now, of course, I have to verify all of that either with t-tests or regressions or ANOVAs, but as a quick assessment, as a quick look at these data, this is incredibly useful and a fast way to get a feel for what your data look like. At this point, I suggest that you pause the video and try for yourself. In particular, why don't you have a look at these questions about importance? So right here, I'll expand this so you can see a little better. These are the questions that we're asking individuals about what's important in their decision about whether to watch a YouTube video. See if you can run the Explore tool on all of these and either choose to split it or not. I won't split it, so you'll see what the output looks like, but of course you can do whatever you want. So go ahead, give it a pause now and try that yourself. Okay, I hope you had a chance to do that. I will quickly go through this. So again, Analyze, Descriptives, Explore. I'm going to select my importance questions, so I'm just going to select all of them using a shift click to get them all selected. I'll put them in this dependent list, and I did reset my options, so I'm going to select them again. Under statistics, I'm going to ask for the outliers and the percentiles. Under plots, I'm going to ask for the histogram and the normality plots, and then that's it. So I'll click OK and we'll see our results. OK, so we see we have no missing cases, right? All of these are a thousand. We have our descriptive information for each of our variables, including the means and medians and so on. Scrolling down, we have the different percentiles, if this is something that's of use to you. We've got our extreme values, which are a little bit weird in a fixed scale, but that's possible as well. We've got our tests of normality, which tell us that none of these variables are normally distributed. That's fine. Here's our histograms, our stem and leaf plots, which I ignore, and our QQ plots, which aren't as useful for this type of a scale question. Here's our box and whisker, which again is a little less useful for a five item scale, but it's still nice to see. And we have that for all of our variables. And so, Again, what this lets you do is get a very quick, comprehensive look at your data without too much work. 
when I start with a data set, I always use the explore tool. First dumping in all my variables, seeing what they look like, making sure that nothing is crazy, there's no weird errors that somebody put in when they were entering the data, or that something just does not make sense given my understanding of what the data should look like. I then jump in and think about what my hypotheses are that I want to test using a variety of statistical tests, which of course I'll cover in future videos. That's it for this video. I hope you found this useful, and if you have any questions, please comment below, and I'll be sure to reply as quickly as I can. Aside from these tutorials, I'm on a mission to equip everyone with the information they need to thrive in our data-rich world. If you'd like to learn not just the mechanics of analysis, which these video tutorials focus on, but also learn the intuition behind the analysis you're performing, I strongly suggest you check out the other intuition-focused videos on this channel where I take the jargon out of statistics and data science and help you build a deep, intuitive understanding behind all the analysis that you're performing. I'll put a link below to a playlist of the videos that focus on just this. Finally, please take a moment to like the video, subscribe to this channel, and click that little bell icon so that you don't miss out on any new content that I put out. Thanks for watching.